Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Bite Size Talk. With us today is Björn Langer, Jose Espinosa Carrasco, and sorry if I cannot pronounce this, uh, Francesca Bernini, and they are from uh, CRG in Barcelona, if that's correct. And Cedric, no, sorry, now, I'm, now I messed it up. Francesca Bernini from uh, the University of Milan and uh, Cedric from also CRG in Barcelona. And uh, they're going to talk about the uh, parent of all special interest groups, animal genomics, which basically predates special interest groups. Uh, so I'm very, very uh, happy to hear about this today. And now, now I'm handing over to Cedric. Thanks a lot, Francesca. And uh, thank you all for watching. So I'm really happy to be introducing this bite-sized talk dedicated to a project that has been going on in our group for almost two, three years now, I think, all together, and eventually turn into a uh, special interest group and to the origin of the special interest group in NFCOR. So now, before we go into the specifics of the of the group and what it can do for you and all these things, which Jong uh, will run you through, I'd like to first explain where this all comes from. Our lab is uh, at the CRG is a lab of functional genomics, and it is actually to help doing functional genomics that we originally developed next floor like 10 years ago now. But this gets us to interact with a lot of people and especially with the farmed animal people. And why did we interact with the farmed animal people? Well, you know, there is something we often forget. Genetics is great, genetics is very interesting, but more importantly, genetics is feeding us. If you look at the growth of the population over the last 50 years, and in reality, the growth of the population over the last 20,000 years, there was no way we would have been able to feed ourselves if we had not used genetics to improve crops or to improve animals. And this was done initially by looking for the good traits and combining animals with the good traits. But there is so much you can do with this. And what happened over the last 20 years, thanks to uh, high throughput genomics, all of these methods that allow us to go into the genomes and understand what is regulating what in the genome, then you can apply all of these techniques to figure out the good bits of the genome and to improve animal breeding. And this is exactly what all of these uh, uh, animal uh, farm animal labs with whom we interacted were interested in. And this is why we had this very ni nice match between the NFCore pipeline and this community. Uh, uh, now, one of the things that is uh, very important to, to realize on, uh, on, on, on animal breeding is that uh, 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 it's not only, you know, I know that a sizable fraction of the NFCore community does not eat meat. And I want everybody to realize that, you know, meat consumption is not going away. But with better genetics, we can help improving the, 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 the quality of life of the stocks. And that's also something to take into account. And also, even though this is an animal genomics group, in reality, all of these genetics methods, they are very much shared with crops. You know, when, when we have to improve crops, make them more resistant, make them more productive, the techniques are roughly the same. And so that's the background of this uh, special interest group that, that started, uh, uh, and Bjorn will give a bit of an history of this, that started with, uh, with uh, many groups interested in, in, in farmed uh, uh, animal genomics and has matured into a special interest group about a year ago. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Bjorn Langer, who works with us and who has been in charge of running the special interest group for over a year now. Bjorn, all yours. Okay, thanks. Yes, the origins of this group actually date a few years back uh, to I, Europe, I cannot eh? see. I cannot see the presentation. I, I don't know the others. Can you see it? I do see it. I uh, can see it too. The origins date a few years back to Europe, which is an umbrella for several. Uh, projects funded by the European Units Horizon program. And for us, it started off in Bovrek, uh, which together with two sister projects, focused on the functional annotation of uh, genomes of various 
farmed animal species, which were cattle, as there were fish species, and uh, pigs and chicken. And this Eurofang umbrella got in the next funding period extended by another set of projects, still aiming for the same goals. Mm -hmm. And all of these share that they heavily rely in their analysis on NextFlow and the use of an F-Core pipeline. You see here the results of a survey that uh, we conducted um, some one, two years back in uh, Eurofang about the um, analysis that had up to this time point been conducted. And you see also a very strong overlap in the analysis amongst the different project groups, heavily relying on an app core pipelines. And that caused us to, um, two or three years back, create and establish a discussion platform where we uh, share our experiences with ex developing Nextflow pipelines using an app core pipelines uh, exchange on uh, problems and also discuss related topics. And uh, in 2022, we basically started to, on a regular basis, monthly meet, exchange, uh, as just mentioned, and also have talks related to the topics. And that also included, for example, a small symposium in which we presented a set of pipelines that are relevant for animal genomics. And when the funding period of the original three projects ran out, we were contemplating on the future of this European pipelines group and decided on broadening the scope and in uh, allow the possibility to uh, also allow other people outside from European to join in. And that basically was the origin of the special interest group that due to the strong ties that we from the beginning had with NF Core, has become uh, an NF Core initiative and is up to now um, containing 93 people on Slack, which is our primary communication platform. And we are, as mentioned, primarily users and developers of pipelines that are focusing on animal genomics. And the typical questions we are targeting are, what kind of tools are people using for a specific type of analysis? Does the tool already exist? Or if not, how can it be developed? And related questions of how can we ensure that the data produced is comparable? And with this, I head back to Cedric. Uh, oh, sorry. Thanks a lot, Bjorn, for this nice introduction. Me trying to unmute myself. And uh, that's where, you know, we have to say who are we capturing for? Who are the users of this uh, special interest group we are looking for? And lucky enough, I have here with me uh, Frances Francesca Bernini from Milano University who works with uh, Alessandro Bagnati. Alessandro is a very, very well-known geneticist in, in the farm animal world. And a few years ago, a few, well, a few months ago, last year, uh, uh, Francesca came to us because she wanted to analyze some data. And we thought this was a good match with the kind of things we are doing with NFCore. And she came to work with us for about six months and was, I would say, our user zero. You know, how do you get someone who has to analyze genomics data uh, uh, gearing up with NFCore. And without further ado, I'd like to invite uh, Francesca sharing with us her experience. Uh, thank you so much, Cedric. Uh, as you said, I was uh, user zero uh, because I have a master's degree in animal husbandry and uh, in animal husbandry sciences and technology. And I'm currently finishing my PhD in veterinary medicine and animal sciences. But my background has no bioinformatics in it. So, uh, of course, before starting my analysis, uh, which is uh, the, the, the idea was to use Nextflow and the pipeline Sarek to analyze 200 whole genome sequences of, two, um, of uh, cattle breeds to identify the proprietary uh, structural variants of the 
autochthonous Aosta cattle breeds, which, which are raised in the Aosta Valley of Italy. I had to follow some courses, of course, because I have uh, zero information about bio bioinformatics. So after following some courses offered by the CRG, um, I started, uh, Bjorn, can, can you change the slide, please? <laughs> I started uh, following the next flow training and after less than two months, I was able to start my analysis. So the first uh, difficult things was to set up the environment, in the environment, but it, the good thing is that once you're done, uh, is that, and you don't have to change anything. And then um, going to the action analysis, I had some problems uh, with the pipeline, but every one of them, I think, were already discussed on the Slack, Slack channel. So I was able to find the solution uh, over there. Uh, and anyway, anyway, whatever problem I had, uh, I just sent the message to the Slack channel. And in a few hours, uh, I had the, 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 the fix uh, to the error. Uh, the main problem that I encountered uh, on my analysis is the lack of freely available uh, reference files uh, that are needed to run the SAREC pipeline, and especially for the bovine reference genome that I used, uh, because there were some files, but for a really old reference uh, genome. So um, going to <laughs> the conclusion, uh, I would say that uh, you must be careful when you try to set up the environment, uh, but after that, it's OK. Uh, if you have any error when running the pipeline, you can just check the Slack channel of the pipeline that you're using, or in our case, maybe the animal uh, genomics uh, group will have some answers. And then uh, if you are a novice, the NF4 launcher will be one of your best friends because uh, it's super useful to uh, prepare the configuration files. Uh, for um, uh, for the special interest group, I would say that creating a repository of the um, files for the non-reference species can be really helpful, and also maybe provide uh, shareable configuration files that can be used for uh, the the analysis that are more used in uh, in our community. So these are my suggestions. Thanks a lot, Francesca. Uh, these are very, very useful and important suggestions, and they are even more relevant because as of today, I'm, I'm very happy to announce that uh, Francesca will be uh, co-animating the special interest group along with Jose and Bjorn. She has accepted joining us, and this is very important uh, adding to the group because Francesca is, by training, uh, a specialist of farm animal genetics. And so she is contributing to com to connecting the group with uh, with with the true communities that this group is meant to capture. So thanks a lot, Francesca, for joining us. And now Bjorn is going to run us uh, in more details on the next activities that are going to be carried out by the group. So uh, Bjorn, please. Yes. Uh... About the main activities, we had a long tradition of having roundtables that started, for example, on topics like data provenance. And uh, within this special interest group, we had one roundtable in the very beginning discussing the future and the ideas of this, and more of them are to be followed in the next year. Uh, furthermore, the activities also contain the development, the collective collaborative uh, development of pipelines. In, in this example that you see here of the small RNA seq pipeline in NFCO, you can see that uh, CRG and also INRAI have contributions that stem from um, the needs in the UFANG group. And uh, another activity that we are planning and currently working on is setting up community resources a bit along the lines of the suggestion of Francesca. One that is currently in work is an overview table of uh, specialists. That's so to say the summary of the analysis that had been conducted in Eurobank 
and who uh, undertook these. To, so to say that one could have a contact reference for a specific type of analysis. And further activities uh, are going to be uh, shared by Jose. Thank you, Bjorn. This is uh, giving me the chance to introduce uh, our last contributor to this talk, Jose Espinosa Carrasco. So Jose is not anyone because he is uh, our NF core core team member. So he belongs to this uh, small group of uh, uh, very influential NF core members who have a say on what are the pipelines that are going to be co-opted by the community and what are the general direction that could be beneficial to NF core. And this is very important because as mentioned by Bjorn, a very important focus of our group is to help adapting existing pipelines so that they meet exactly the need of our community. And that cannot happen you know, out of thin air. This means that our community has to be connected to the broader community. And this is an important effort now ongoing within the SIG, which uh, Jose is now going to highlight. So Jose, please, all yours. Oh. Okay, <clears throat> so to talk uh, about our, uh, our activities, I would like to first introduce DC Elixir Focus Group, the Domestic Animals Genome and Phenome Focus Group. The aim of, of this uh, focus group is to be the first step towards the creation of an Elixir community that will connect scientists working in genotype to phenotype research in domestic animals. Uh, and a special relevant task of the group is to promote an, an interoperable standard framework to analyze the data so that the researchers across Europe and beyond can, can cooperate. Uh, actually, the focus group is working on a white paper uh, to introduce <coughs> the community. And one of its sections will be devoted to this, to the bioinformatic tools, to pipelines and practices to, to achieve uh, the goal of performing fair analysis in animal genomics. And, of, and we are in charge of this section of the paper. This is actually to what the animal genomics special interest group is devoted. Uh, and we would actually like to use the, the Slack channel and probably some meetings uh, of the special interest group to try to get ideas or feedback from people that could be interested in, in contributing to this section of, of the white paper. This is actually similar to another activity we did in the past with the Eurofan group. And it was not yet the special interest group where we were dedicating subsession to discuss the context of, of, of the paper empowering bioinformatics communities with Nesco and NFCore that it's on by archive. And it, I think it was uh, quite a quite successful activity. And for those interested in contributing to the section of the white paper, I will suggest you to please show up on the Slack channel or in January's meeting where we plan to dedicate to, to, to discuss this. So one of the main activities of the group, if you have followed it, it was to organize talks <laughs> that could be relevant to the animal genomics community in different aspects. So they range from technical talks uh, that discuss how to implement best computational practices for analyzing uh, animal genomics data or introduce tools or pipelines. And we have other talks that are kind of more inspiring ones that uh, is looking forward to what we, what we can learn, for instance, from the current state of the art in, in human genomics. And actually, you can find all our talks listed in a dedicated YouTube playlist, as you can see here, uh, or in the Special Interest Group site in the NFCore website. Uh, so here on, on this timeline, uh, it might be easy to see the talks we have we had already. And as I mentioned uh, on the previous slide, you can see how we have talks dedicated to more technical stuff, such as the visualization of data, or other introducing projects, European projects, well, until the moment it has been European projects related to animal genomics. And finally, these talks that I called before more inspiring ones of prominent animal genomics or human genomics scientists. And actually our last speaker, Roderick Igo, announced in our last talk the, that the new gene code release would reveal an expanded annotation of 40,000 London coding RNAs. So this was uh, doubling the size of the annotated London coding RNAs until that moment. And, and this was the greatest increase in just gene codes 20 year history. And this was announced in, in the special interest group. So we are very proud of it and honor. 
And actually, we are also very honored to have as our next speaker, Harris Lewin, the chair of the Earth Biogenome Project that, as you can see on this article that appeared uh, on Science just last week, is the project, the uh, Earth Biogenome Project, is trying to sequence the genomes of all complex life. And during the talk, he will introduce the project, discuss about the advance, the current state, and the challenge that is facing. Uh, the talk will take place next week online on the 20th of November. And be aware that we have shifted the time of one hour. So it will start at five instead of four, which is uh, the normal time, so that the, that it's more US friendly. Uh, yes, and next slide, yes. And finally, I would like uh, you uh, to encourage you to join the special interest group. We have a dedicated page in the NFCore website that contains all the information regarding the group. And as I mentioned before, the link to all the previous talks. Also, uh, I will suggest you to join us in, in Slack. You just need to join the NFCore Slack and then go to the Animal Genomics channel. Uh, and there we will be very happy to try to discuss anything related to animal genomics, how to use NFCore pipelines, if you are facing difficulties on using them for animal genomics, or also initiatives to create resources uh, that could be shared by animal genomics people. And of course, of course, uh, we wanted also to, to do this activity uh, of writing this section of the Elixir Focus Group uh, white paper. Uh, and finally, just a reminder that in a regular basis, our meetings take place the third Wednesday of the month from four to five. And you can also find this information and the link to Zoom in, in the site, in the, in the special interest group in, in the NFCore uh, website. Well, Jose, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for this uh, very informative uh, part of the talk. And I have to say we are very proud that we had this scoop on the number of long non-coding RNA. So if you stay tuned to this channel, you may have access to information before everybody. And I have to say, the notion that we now have uh, twice more long non-coding RNA than we have protein coding genes in our genomes is something quite big. So please join our channel, join us. And uh, uh, we are very, very eager to get this effort growing to become a collective community effort. There's a lot of work to be done. We are now going to take your, I, I, I thank both the, the, the three speaker, Bjorn, Jose, and, uh, and Francesca. And we will now take your question. And I already see one from uh, Alexandru uh, Mires, Miseranci, Mireanci. Sorry, sorry if I misspelled your name. And so Alejandro is asking us uh, uh, how we are going to make the data public, you know, the, 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 the collection of tools and the collection of studies. And yes, this is going to be made entirely public, most likely distributed through Google, uh, sheet documents, all these kind of things, and so. But this will be entirely public, and and hopefully as uh, 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 as uh, actively maintained as possible. This will also be made available through GitHub. This is something we have to decide. But all of these resources will be made public to anyone within the group and outside the group. And as uh, uh, your second question is about how will it be possible to access and to ask questions, and here we are going to try to focus as much as we can on Slack. We still have a few mailing lists around because everybody's not super comfortable with Slack, but our purpose is to be entirely Slack driven like NFCore. And it's something, you know, it's always a little bit of a, of a headache to get people into Slack and to make sure that they keep an eye on Slack, but that, 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 that's something we're going to try to aim for. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, we have here, uh, uh, yes, so Phil has already replied, you know, is there a tool to use uh, Salmon for RNA-seq? And the answer is yes, there is NFCore RNA-seq. And so that's exactly the kind of question we encourage on this channel, you know, what kind of tool is the rest of the community using to do this or to do that? This is the kind of things we'd like to see. Uh, 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 so to everyone, yeah, everybody can unmute themselves and ask questions directly, if any. And otherwise, we'll be happy to answer any questions coming later on Slack. We're aware that because the talks are available online, you know, people can watch them at their uh, most convenient time and ask questions when they want. 
So if you have any question when watching this talk, just do not hesitate to send uh, a question on Slack. Yeah, I just removed the spotlight now so that we uh, get a last uh, a view also of all of our speakers. Um, are there any more open questions that we haven't addressed yet? I'm sorry to take over from you. Um, so I guess that is a no. <laughs> or um, in, in this case, thank you all so much. Uh, it was a pleasure to hear from this really big uh, special interest group. Um, and I hope there is a lot more to come. Also nice to see that, um, that new members that have no prior experience in bioinformatics can have such a great impact uh, on a group like this. So thank you so much, Francesca, as well. Um, I leave the last word you uh, to you, Cedric. <laughs> well, thank you, Francesca. Thank you to uh, all of you for joining. And uh, bear in mind that this uh, special interest group is yours. It's for you to decide what it's all about. It's for you to decide what should be the main theme that it is going to address. It's a special interest group. It means that it brings together people having the same problem, the same biological problem, and looking for collective tools to solve these problems. And as such, it really is meant to be a community effort, and as such, it is the property of all those who contribute, no more, no less. So we really hope to see many of you joining in the near future. Thank you. Thank you very much.